<clears throat> Hello. In this video, I'm going to uh, introduce nucleophilic addition reactions to aldehydes and ketones, talking about the possible mechanisms that these reactions can undergo. Uh, depending on uh, the structure of your undergraduate organic chemistry course, you may have already talked about one of these mechanisms in regards to the synthesis of alcohols. <clears throat> so I'm going to start um, by establishing the carbonyl group as, the, as an electrophile. And so here, here is our, our carbonyl group. And so we have two things that, that help us understand the carbonyl group as electrophile. First, right, uh, first, the carbon oxygen double bond is polar. Uh, and so the carbon has a, a partial positive charge and the oxygen has a partial negative charge. <clears throat> the carbonyl group is perhaps more electrophilic than you might expect given the polarization or the, given the polarity difference or given the electronegativity difference. Uh, and that is because the carbonyl group also has a resonance structure that's carbocation-like. Resonance uh, contributor. Can, no, there we go. And so, you know, the carbonyl group, in addition, has this resonance contributor. Uh, and so the carbon of the carbonyl group is perhaps even more uh, electrophilic than you might expect, given the electronegativity difference. And so I'll put my partial positive charge here and my partial negative charge on the oxygen. And uh, sorry about that. And um, so what this means is that under the right circumstances, a carbonyl group or an aldehyde or ketone especially uh, can react with, I do not need a resonance arrow here, uh, can react with, okay, I need my text, there we go, some kind of nucleophile and some sort of proton source to add the nucleophile to the carbon and a proton at the oxygen, synthesizing it, some kind of alcohol. Now there are two versions of this mechanism. There's the strong basic nucleophile version. And this is the version that you may already have experience with if you studied these reactions in the synthesis of alcohols as there are carbon and hydrogen nucleophiles files that fall into this category. Generally, uh, what this looks like is you have an anionic nucleophile. It is a strong nucleophile and a strong base. And then you have acid of some kind added as a second step. Because the nucleophile is strongly basic, having acid around initially means that the acid-base reaction between the nucleophile and the acid is more likely than the nucleophilic addition. So in this mechanism, our nucleophile, in this mechanism, Nucleophilic attack happens first to form an alkoxide and anion nucleophiles in here. Actually, move my my proton step out. Uh, and then the second step is proton transfer. So, so the addition of an acid neutralizes this reaction, protonates the alkoxide anion, and we get the addition product. 
Nucleophiles that fall into this category include organometallic reagents like the, the Grignard reagents, uh, acetylide anions, and hydride transfer reagents like lithium aluminum hydride. But this is not to say that, that aldehydes and ketones cannot react with weak nucleophiles like water and alcohols. It's just the mechanism is going to have to be different. Generally, what this mechanism looks like is our weak nucleophile, which is often a protic compound and is neutral. And because it's not very nucleophilic, it's not going to react directly. But if we have acid present in the reaction mixture, we can get uh, the reaction to occur. So if we look at the order of events in the strong basic nucleophile case, we have nucleophilic attack, then proton transfer. <clears throat> Those steps are reversed in the weak nucleophile case. Whatever, whatever our proton source is, uh, often, often just needs to be a, a, a strong acid that's soluble in the nucleophile. And like other cases where, like other places where we use water or alcohols as a nucleophile, those species are also the solvent in the reaction. And so now we have this protonated uh, ketone and this protonated ketone has a resonance contributor. And in comparison to the neutrally charged ketone, this resonance contributor is much more important uh, because it puts the, the because there's only a positive charge and it puts the positive charge on the uh, less electronegative atom, even though that atom then doesn't have a, a full octet. So then we have our neutral uh, protic nucleophile. It does its attack. Usually we draw that nucleophilic attack on the, the uh, carbonyl looking resonance contributor, but you could certainly draw it at the carbocation contributor. Uh, nobody would fault you. And after that step, I need proton. And after that step, we form the carbon nucleophile bond that we need. But as in all cases with neutral protic nucleophiles, now we have this extra proton hanging around and something in the reaction uh, needs to come and take that other proton. And a convenient thing to grab another proton is either a molecule of the solvent, the, the nucleophile slash solvent, or uh, why not use another molecule of the carbonyl electrophile? Ah, arrows. There we go. Why not use another molecule of the carbonyl electrophile? Because what that will do is recreate the protonated ketone, which we need. And uh, for the reaction to go on again. And in fact, this reaction is catalytic in acid, so you don't need to use a full stoichiometric equivalent, though frequently, uh, and, and frequently a full stoichiometric equivalent is not used uh, for, for a variety of, of practical reasons. So here are the two mechanisms by which these reactions can undergo using generic nucleophiles. In the upcoming videos, I'm going to uh, share some of the uh, neutral nucleophiles that can do this mechanism and what the outcomes of those reactions are. And I already have a video series on the kinds of anionic nucleophiles, Grignard reagents, hydride transfer reagents, and so on, uh, and, and the outcomes of those reactions. Thank you for watching.